We are now live. Welcome, everybody, to the Would You Rather Iron Man style. I'm waiting for my guest to come on, but I'll do a little quick introduction. I'm Mike Riley. This is Would You Rather by Norma Tech by Hyperice. So here comes Lynn. Let me put her on. There we go. We're going to have her on the screen. She is an eight-time Iron Man champion, former American record holder in the Iron Man, from Bend, Oregon. There she is, Lindsay Corbin. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we're on the West Coast. Good morning to us. It's noon on the East Coast. And for the next few minutes, we're going to go rapid style questions. It's fast action for even faster athletes like you, Lindsay. And we're excited to have you on. So welcome to the show. Yeah, looking forward to it. I've had my coffee. I'm ready. I'm going to be firing on all cylinders. Well, good. And uh, this is rapid fire questions that you have not seen. So we want to let everybody know that you're going to be hearing them for the first time. But before we jump into it, Linz, why don't you let us know how you've been doing through these uh, tougher times we've been having? How, how have you been coping? Yeah, you know, I've taken the approach of the glass is half full versus half empty. And it's kind of been nice. Like I haven't had a summer where I've been able to stay home and you know, ride my gravel bike, ride my mountain bike, you know, not have that structured training that I'm used to. And so, you know, it's difficult. My passion is racing and that's what I live for. But I also am a bit of a spiritual person. And I feel like this was a sign that we needed to like, have a reset, calm down. Um, yeah. And I've just been trying to find the positives in the situation and just make the most of it. And yeah, like I said, I'm just enjoying you know, actually being home, our neighbors don't even know what to do. They're like, you live here? <laughs> you know, it's the most I've been home in so long. And so, um, yeah, a lot of it's just focusing on what you can do. And, you know, with the races off the calendar, it's, you know, I've had a shift in mindset and that it's kind of January right now. So for me personally, I've, you know, dropped the intensity down on my training and um, things have been not as structured as normal, but I've actually been enjoying it. <laughs> You know, it's like it's like we're living life the way most people live life, and you appreciate the things around you, which is fantastic. And you yeah. know, I was also you're you're one of the original Norma Tech athletes out there. Long yeah. time ago, tell us that story. How'd you get connected with Norma Tech so early on? Yeah, you know, I was actually um, through Ironman and the XC program. I met um, an XC athlete that invited me to come speak at. Um, the one of the gyms um, in Dallas, Texas. And mm -hmm. so I was at the Equinox gym doing an appearance with Leanda Cave. And I met G, who is one of the founders of Norma Tech. And that was my first introduction to these crazy moon boots that I knew nothing about. And <laughs> at the end of the day of our um, speaking and doing presentations, we were all tired. And G was like, you have to sit in these boots. They're going to change your life. And so I sat in the boots and my mind was blown. And basically I was like, I'm not leaving Dallas, Texas without a pair of these moon boots. I'm now converted. And, um, you know, I am a very, like, I'm always on the go. And the thing I love about Norma Tex is they force me to like sit down and chill out for at least 30 minutes to an hour each day of just sitting down, relaxing and recovering. One of, one of the first times I, I went into the booth at an Ironman race, put them on. Oh, my gosh. Then I was at a race. I forget which one it was. My legs were just killing me because I had ridden that week quite a bit and been standing all day. Just for the heck of it, I said to Tom Zebart, God, I could put some Norma Tex on right now. Well, all of a sudden they showed up. I, I never sit down announcing, but I sat down, put them on. And while I was calling people in, I'm thinking, this is the best I've ever felt, yeah. you know. It's like you're at the day spa, looking a little too comfortable back there. <laughs> yeah, I did feel, I felt a little guilty. I don't know, you know, I'm supposed to be not doing stuff like that. But, uh, all right, so are, are you ready for these rapid fire questions? Because now the audience are going to get to know Lindsay Corbin a little better than I think we've known you before, just because of the nature of these questions. Are you ready? I hope I'm ready. I'm an open book. I feel like as an athlete, one of my claims to fame is I'm pretty authentic open book. So no holding back. Let's see what you got. <laughs> okay, here we go. Favorite splurge snack, salty or sweet? Both combined. 
Oh, you're, you're copping out right away. That can't happen. Window Stop seat or aisle seat? Cups. Come on. There you, there you go. Window seat or aisle seat? Oh, window. I like to nap. Driving to a race or flying? 100% flying. All out bike descents or cautious? Oh, all out bike descents. I grew up as a ski racer. Winning world 70.3 or Ironman? Kona. Oh, 100% Ironman. How about riding steep climbs? Come on, Mike. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. Riding steep climbs or riding into a headwind? Oh, 100% steep climbs. I love it. Bike mechanic or self-mechanic? Oh, bike mechanic. Mark Anderson, uh, correct. <laughs> wine or whiskey? Wine. <laughs> Action film or love story? Oh. oh okay, you stopped Probably thriller, which you didn't even put in there. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a thriller. Oprah Winfrey or Ellen DeGeneres? Oprah. Reality show or Nat Nat Geo? Oh, reality TV. Junk. Uh, pre what pre race meal ritual? Do you have one? Oh yeah. Um it's not exciting. Chicken and rice. Sometimes I'll do fish and rice, but usually chicken and rice. What okay, about you? that isn't what's your that, that is not meal? a pre race meal the night before? Yeah. Something protein, a lot of protein. Really? Uh, announcing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, pre, um, more anxious on race morning or the night before? Uh, the 30 minutes before the start, 100%. Uh, who does your dog, Chimmy, love more, you or Chris, your husband? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. But she's definitely a Chris dog. I mean, yeah, she's Chris's dog, and I get all the cuddles. But, yeah, for sure, so, Chris's. <laughs> So you watch, uh, you binge on Netflix or uh, Hulu? Oh, Netflix. <laughs> Favorite race victory, Wisconsin or Arizona? Um, I'm going to have to go with Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, okay. Two I times. I was inside in the wall. Arizona is like the best U.S. race until I went to Wisconsin. And now Wisconsin has my heart for U.S. Ironman venue. Moose Mo City. You, uh, Lake Placid. What? Or Wisconsin. Lake Placid. Sorry, Wisconsin. Oh, wow. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate. <laughs> uh, cooking or baking? Um, baking. Your favorite male pro triathlete? Um, ben Hoffman, because we went to college together and got our start. What about your favorite female pro triathlete? Heather Jackson. I knew you were going to say that. I was going to ask you between Heather. I was going to ask you between Heather and, and Wadi, but I want, how about Paula or Huddle? Oh, Paula. She's pretty legendary and power to the female. <laughs> Reading or white, uh, writing? Reading. Hiking or fishing? Uh, hiking to a fishing destination. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Norma Tech, pre or post workout? What do you like better? Oh, I like post workout in the evening. Just that's my calm down time. <laughs> Energy drink or coffee? Okay, so I this is a little bit of a secret, but I cut coffee out of my life and all caffeine in 2015 when I broke my femur. And I now only drink caffeine or real coffee on race day. So, and it is. It is a drug for me. Like when I take it, I get superpowers. So I am 100% on the caffeine train. When so I have, it, you, have you had some this morning? Yes, I'm doing my first ever virtual race today. And so I have got the caffeine flowing. I got to throw everything I can at this system to hang out with all the speedsters. <laughs> so and the last time you... questions were coming, so I wanted to be ready. So you, the last time you did caffeine was Arizona last November? Yeah, the last caffeine oh I had was Ironman Arizona. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you do that? I don't know, okay. but when I had the first sip today, it was just like, and it also I think it's just that race day ritual that you have it, and it's like, all right, game on. <laughs> okay, an actor you have a crush on. Oh, I'm going to have to call Stump on this. Like, I am not a big movie or TV no I actor out there. Them. I train so hard. We put on a movie and I just like, I can't, yeah, I just fall asleep. I mean, Chris Pine, Brad Pitt, anybody? My goodness. 
Matt Damon. <laughs> there you go. Nothing wrong with Matt Damon. And he's done a triathlon. So that, that's a good answer. Yeah, How yeah. about uh, an actress that Chris has a crush on? Does Chris have a crush on an actress? No, we aren't really movie people. Julia Roberts? I feel like actually you need to ask Chris because his answer is going to be more hilarious. Like now I'm actually going to have to ask him when he gets home from fishing who his favorite actress is. Well, running in Bend, Oregon in the snow or on a beach somewhere? Oh, that's tough. I will probably go in the beach because I am not a cold weather person. As you saw at Ironman Ireland last year. But I did have that question for you. Announcing in the pouring rain all day at Ironman Ireland and freezing cold or the hottest Ironman you've ever announced at? Oh, gosh. That's a tough one because I'm a heat guy. I love the heat. Uh, yeah, I'd rather do a, I'd rather be in Ireland than almost anywhere because of my heritage. But I love announcing, sorry, athletes. If it's hotter, I, I feel better. <laughs> you know? Me too. I'm the same. And speaking of so, Ireland, I had another one. Uh, whiskey or Guinness? Oh, I, I'm I, Irish whiskey backed up by a Guinness. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Good one. How about uh, lake swim or ocean swim for you? Lake swim. Heart rate or, or power pace? Uh, I use heart rate first. Uh, what about uh, Boulder or Arizona places? Oh, Bend, Oregon. But well, I knew Arizona you would be second. My claim to fame is I've actually never spent the night in Boulder. I've just been for the day. So I've never for, for spent a... the night there. But uh, yeah, I'm a Bend, Oregon fan for sure. So you a hat or a visor girl? Uh, hat. Hat. Uh, how about podcasts during workout or music that you mix? Uh, it depends on how hard the workout is. If it's a, a G-rated workout, not that hard, I'll go podcast. But if we're going all in, we're having the caffeine, we're going to have the music cranking. <laughs> okay, trust a fart or not trust a fart? <laughs> <laughs> in an Iron Man, you don't trust anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's how about track, uh, track tempo or hill repeats? Um, I prefer a track tempo. Really? Backpack or your carry case? Oh, backpack. You're a backpack. Yeah, I you're a backpack. <laughs> uh, you swim with tinted goggles or clear? Uh, tinted goggles. Well, like the light tint, medium. How about uh, road helmet or arrow when you race? Uh, generally a road helmet. How about puke on the run? How about puke on the run or slow down and let it pass? <laughs> <laughs> a puke and rally, puke and rally. But I've actually only done that once in Hawaii. I've only had, uh, I've done to over 20 Ironmans. I've only had one puke and that was in Kona, which I guess if you're going to have a good place to do it, may as well be Kona. But yeah, I'm was not a big puker. <laughs> not, not a big, well, yeah, one time. That, that's not bad at all. Yeah. How about burpee, burpees or double blinders? Oh, I don't even know what a double blinder is. Well, then it's burpees for you. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I'll take burpees. <laughs> Sit-ups or planks? Oh, planks. Yoga or spin class? Yoga. <clears throat> ah, treadmill or rowing machine? Treadmill. Push-up or pull-up? Push-ups. My pull-up game is terrible. <laughs> What's your favorite psych up song? Oh, um, I like some, I like Eminem. There's a lot of Eminem songs I like. Eminem, I did not see that coming. That was good. What did you think it was going to be like some country, Coldplay? Come on now, I'm a Coldplay guy. Don't do that to I me. I know, I was going to ask you what the like, what the ultimate pre-race uh, as we're walking to the swim start song is for you. Uh, that Coldplay gets me psyched up. Bob O'Reilly gets me psyched up. Uh, anything, anything upbeat. I mean, BCC plays so much good stuff. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I love it all. I love it all. Are you a, you a kale or a spinach girl? Oh, I like both. I'm 
all aboard the leafy green train, but um, probably spinach. I, we would probably about, put more spinach in the house than kale. Peanut butter or almond butter? Peanut butter with chocolate. <laughs> How about milk or dark chocolate candy? Oh, dark chocolate. Milk's too <laughs> sweet for me. I felt like I led you into the way I delivered it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you like meal preparation or something delivered, especially during this time? Um, oh, we're definitely doing a lot of cooking at home. So oh. um, I'll do meal prep. But at the end of a six or seven hour training day, I will do takeout or we call it Chris Cooks. And when Chris cooks, he goes through the list of our favorite restaurants and is like, what are we eating tonight? <laughs> <laughs> All the carbs, please, or low carb. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, all the carbs. I'm definitely all the carbs. in carb town. So have you been isolating well or a little stir crazy? Uh, we're starting to go a little stir crazy, uh, but we handled it well at the beginning. We did a lot of house projects. <laughs> Virtual happy hours, yes or no? Uh, yes, but they're starting to get a little old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for the real deal. I like like my friends in the computer screen. I'm ready for the real life interaction. TikTok or Instagram? Instagram. I don't I you triathletes shouldn't dance. If you've ever been about to Joe? an after party, triathletes should not be dancing. <laughs> well, there's about one in ten that's got the moves. Yeah. Michelle Vesterby can do the worm. She's pretty legit. Yeah, she, but yeah, yeah, yeah uh, she, no, no dancing for triathletes. <laughs> Joe Exotic or Carol Baskin? Oh boy, probably Joe Exotic. <laughs> well, you're better than Starkowitz. He didn't even know who the heck they were, which oh, you know no. is not a bad thing. <laughs> How about Dave Scott or Mark Allen? Dave Scott. Ah, uh, what was the first year of Iron Man? What year was that? Was it 1984? Oh, Lindsay, I, I got to take points away. That's 78. Oh, no. <laughs> Point, points away from you. All right. Are you, you, you like reading books or playing cards? Um, probably reading books. Late night probably ice cream. <laughs> Late night ice cream or wine? Um, Late night ice cream. How about Airbnb at a race or a hotel? Oh, that depends. If it's like Ironman Wisconsin, it's fun to be like at the hotel in the middle of all the action. You know, sometimes I think that that's the spirit of Ironman is the journey. But um, I also like a good Airbnb. If it's a race um, like in Europe or we're going to do a lot of traveling, for sure an Airbnb. But if it's just like a weekend trip, uh, I kind of like being in on the action and the convenience of the hotel. And you come back from the race and your bed's all made and it's all clean. I'll take it. <laughs> What's your favorite recovery routine? Um, immediate. Well, it's not really my favorite, but it's what's best for the body. <laughs> Would be um, a recovery drink, you know, pretty shortly within, you know, a workout window of 30 minutes or so. And then a shower some real food, sit in the Norma text, and then fall asleep to the lull of the boots, um, which is like a sleep machine app for me. And um, sometimes actually, believe it or not, another workout, like an easy swim or a super easy bike ride to flush the legs feels good. That would be if it was a hard workout. If it's a race, we're done for the day. And What's the next Kona, race on your... If it's what? Kona, then it's like, we go straight to the King Cam pool and... It's beer, French fries, salty foods, milkshakes, and then I peel myself out of the pool and go watch the finishers on Elite Drive. So not the best recovery tactics, but I earned them. Yeah, I've never, I've never had the opportunity to visit that pool on race day. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you make, you make me, you make me jealous. Everybody comes back to the finish line so fresh, uh, and showered and everything. And and one athlete once I put my arm around him. God, Mike, you kind of smell. Yeah, dude, I've been out here since 5 a.m. Give me a break. <laughs> so good. Well, Lindsay, this has been fantastic. What's the next race on your schedule? What are you thinking? I mean. Man, 
honestly, I am doing a really good job of just living in the present and my initial ideas of races I've now kind of tabled until I know for sure that it's going to happen. So, um, yeah, I've, I've cleared my calendar until I know, like, I know that Ironman keeps postponing the races and fingers crossed that this fall will be at a start line, but, um, I'm not counting on anything particular right now. Um, until I know for sure. So Do you want your first it's going to be something in the United States. If I was a betting person, it's going to be a domestic race in the United States. Maybe I'm well, you... do... I don't know. We'll see. So you want do you want your first race back to be a 70.3 or an Ironman? Oh, probably as I mean, I would love for it to be an Ironman, but I need the 70.3 to warm up. So <laughs> You know, it's like, it, I think it will be interesting to see, you know, after having gone so long without racing that, you know, you're going to have to get back into the groove again. So I'd like a few practice rounds before an Ironman. Right. What would you do? Would you do Kona in February then? Yes. Well, I am qualified. So there you go. Um, you know, I think it'll make for an interesting year of February and an October Kona. But um, yeah, I definitely, I mean, I could guess that that's sort of what I'm planning on now is. Kona and hopefully I'll get the chance to race before then uh so we'll see good what for about you. you what well, are you doing with your uh free time uh what am I doing I'm riding my bike a lot I've been lifting more weights than I ever have before uh, answering a lot of emails talking to a lot of people doing a lot of zoom meetings doing this uh working the virtual reality series with Iron Man so just trying to stay busy but I'm gonna tell you I'm going crazy and <laughs> yeah. and and R R Rose my wife, she's getting a little tired of, of me practicing when she wakes up in the morning. Hi, honey, you are a good wife. You know, I can't, I can't keep doing that. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, I did, I've got it. I did have a question for you. Where did you run your 249 marathon? Arizona in okay. Phoenix. It was called the Valley of the Sun Marathon. Okay. Got and it. the best story of that is Rose and uh, my best friend, Murphy Reinschreiber at that time was, was waiting for me at the finish, and I turned the corner and had about, oh, 400 meters to go to where the finish line was. And Murphy looked at his watch and said, you get her, better get your and you know butt moving. And I'm thinking, why? Because the qualification for Kona was sub 250. Okay. And I turn and I look at the clock, and it's clicking down 47, 48. Oh, my gosh. So I ran 249. 59. Oh, wow. I was, a, I was the last one. And then we're looking at the list on a wall. All our names were on the list. And some guy walks up and goes, look at this dude. He made it by one second. And I go, that was me. <laughs> oh, wow. So the marathon act time actually qualified you for Ironman Hawaii. He, no, for Boston. Oh, for Boston. Okay, got for it. For Boston. Yeah, I was, that was the qualification time for Boston. So look at that. You did some research. I, My fastest marathon time. <laughs> that's awesome. And I, I was wondering, too, if the female, what is, does Brittany have the record, 251? I was wondering no, if that, the female has outrun your marathon record. Oh, I don't think so. Don't All think right, so. We got a goal. We got to take down the Mike Riley marathon record. Something yeah, by itself, by itself, without a swim and a bike. Yeah, what, what, you know. <laughs> exactly, beforehand. Well, Lindsay, everybody out there has been going through the same type things. What, what advice would you have for all the great age group athletes out there? Yeah, you know, my advice would just be to find the gratitude and look for the good things and the silver lining and what's going on and, you know, living in the present, you know, don't worry about the fitness that's lost or the races you've missed out on and don't get too far ahead of yourself wondering, you know, about what's next or when the next race will be. I think just, you know, in racing and an Ironman, a lot of it is just staying present and in the moment on race day. And I think a lot of the lessons that we have as Ironman athletes, we can apply to greater life, especially right now. And yeah, you know, I always say to like, thank a volunteer, be kind, be nice. And I think that's especially important now more than other, other times. It's just to like, be nice to those who are around you and appreciative and have an attitude of gratitude. And yeah, keep up the good work. And I can't wait to see everyone at the races, hopefully this year. Um, yeah, 
Till then, we've got virtual hangouts to look forward to. There, there we go. And Lindsay, ever since I first met you, I think back in 2010 or 11, your attitude and your positiveness and your smile has never changed and it's been constant. And that's been great for our sport. So thank you very much for everything you've given back yeah. to the sport of Ironman and triathlon. Thank you so much. And yeah, good to see you again, Mike. I've missed seeing you at the races and the finish. And yeah, can't wait for my next You Are an Iron Man. Uh, it's going to be all the greater, too, I think. So I think you have a tear in your eye for everyone that you call. Like everyone's just going to be, it's going to be that much greater when it happens. So I know. I, I, I can't wait. Well, thank you very much for being on and uh, have a great day. And we'll see you somewhere soon. Awesome. Take care. Bye bye. Aloha. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you next Wednesday for another Would You Rather by Norma Tech by Hyper Ice. Fast questions for even faster athletes. Take care of yourselves. Be kind. We'll see you next time.